Hello Space Fans and welcome to another edition of Space Fan News. This week, Juno arrives at Jupiter and begins its 20-month mission to understand the giant planet. Astronomers are closing in on solving something called the Quasar Seed Problem using observations from the Hubble Pit Space Telescope, and Hitomi captures detailed X-ray images of a galaxy cluster with a supermassive black hole at its center before its demise last March. Well, it's official. Juno is now safely in orbit around the largest planet in our solar system, Jupiter. Systems, this is NAV. Go ahead, NAV. Yeah, we see the expected uh, sharp shift upward and the Doppler residuals indicating the main engine has started. Copy that. That's good news. We are uh, still awaiting confirmation of that in the tone. All stations on June and Court, it's time we see the tone for minimum burn timer. Almost there. All stations on June Accord, we have the tone for burn cutoff on Delta B. Roger, Bo, Move, Juno, Juno, welcome to Jupiter. Burn time was 2102 seconds, only differing one second off of the pre burn predictions. What a feeling. A mission of this complexity. Uh, to accomplish tonight is, is, is just truly amazing. And it really highlights the partnership and the teamwork between, between NASA and our contractors and our partners to be able to achieve this, this amazing, amazing mission. So tonight, through tones, Juno sang to us, and it was a song of perfection. The team, the amount of time and effort everyone put into this and the risks that were overcome, it's amazing. I mean, the more you know about the mission, you know just how tricky this was and to have it be flawless. I mean, I really can't put it into words. You see a handful of people up here, but what we represent is a team of almost 900 people that built and launched Juno, and roughly 300 people that operated it and got us all the way through into Jupiter orbit tonight. Putting an orbiter around Jupiter is, uh, you know, that's the reason we all go into this profession. Is, uh, is you know, it's science fiction and yet it's fact. You get a, a, a really great dedicated team of a lot of people working really hard for a really long time. You can do some amazing things. NASA did it again. <laughs> We're in orbit. We conquered. Jupiter. <laughs> now that Juno is finally at Jupiter, it begins its 20-month mission to observe the Jovian planet to try and understand the origins and evolution of Jupiter. With its suite of nine science instruments, Juno will investigate the existence of a solid planetary core, map Jupiter's intense magnetic field, measure the amount of water and ammonia in the deep atmosphere, and observe the planet's auroras. Over the next few months, the project will be testing the instruments and making sure everything is ready to go and take observations. And don't worry, I will keep you posted. <laughs> Next, astronomers have long been puzzling over how supermassive black holes could form in the early universe. Astronomers have found extremely luminous quasars in the early universe that could only be powered by black holes millions of times the mass of the Sun. The thing is, according to most theories about how these gigantic black holes form, there just hasn't been enough time for them to grow to the size that are indicated by the bright quasars that they see in the early universe. Astronomers believe that supermassive black holes form from smaller ones, say about 100 times the mass of the Sun, and they call these seeds. And then, over time, they suck in more stuff, collide with other black holes, and eventually get huge. <laughs> they call this process accretion, and it takes time, billions of years. And astronomers have seen million solar mass black holes as early as a half a billion years after the Big Bang. So this is very puzzling, and astronomers wonder how they could ever get that big so early in the history of the universe. 
They call it the quasar seed problem, and they haven't known how to solve it. That is, until now. Using observations from Hubble and really sophisticated computer models, they think they might have an answer. Data taken from the Cosmos survey done by Hubble, astronomers found a particular galaxy called CR7 from a time when the universe was roughly 1 billion years old. And it had some extremely unusual features in the light signature. Specifically, a certain hydrogen line in the spectrum, known as Lyman Alpha, was several times brighter than expected. And remarkably, the spectrum also showed an unusually bright helium line. And this meant that whatever is driving this source is very hot, hot enough to ionize helium. And to get this spectrum, you'd need it to be 100,000 K, which is a very hot and a very hard ultraviolet source. So these and other unusual features in the spectrum, such as the absence of any detected lines from elements heavier than helium, or metals, that's what astronomers call metals, Together with the source's distance, which also gives it its cosmic epoch, meant that it could either be a cluster of primordial stars or a supermassive black hole likely formed by direct collapse. Now, direct collapse is a really interesting idea. Basically, you begin with a primordial cloud of hydrogen and helium, which is sitting in a sea of ultraviolet radiation. Then, you crunch this cloud in the gravitational field of a dark matter halo. Now, normally, the cloud would be able to cool and split up to form stars, which is what happens most of the time in the early universe. But in the direct collapse scenario, the ultraviolet photons keep the gas hot, which stops any star formation. And, and that's the key part. Under these conditions, you get something very hard to make. Collapse without fragmentation. As the gas gets more and more compact, eventually you have the conditions for a massive black hole. So essentially what they're saying is that you have a bunch of gas, all of it going straight into a black hole, instead of making stars in between. Wow. So based on Hubble's observations of CR7, astronomers ran some sophisticated modeling software at the University of Texas Supercomputing Center, comparing both scenarios that could be causing the spectrum that Hubble saw the primordial star cluster scenario, or the supermassive direct collapse supermassive black hole scenario. Now the black hole scenario matched the observations dead on, while the primordial star cluster simulation failed big time. Now astronomers do this all the time. They match data and observations with simulations, and the ones that match the best have are the most promising theories. So it looks like that this direct collapse scenario is very promising. So that was pretty cool. And now, using observations from the Chandra X-ray Telescope, astronomers think they have two more direct collapse supermassive black hole candidates that they will be taking a closer look at. Finally, remember back in SFN 159, I told you about the demise of a revolutionary new X-ray telescope launched by Japan that held the promise of ushering in a new era of high-energy astronomy? Well, just before it died, as they were checking out the spacecraft just after launch, Hitomi made some very detailed observations of the Perseus cluster of galaxies, some 240 million light years away in the constellation Perseus, that for the first time mapped the motion of the extremely hot gas inside the cluster. With the successful launch of Japan's Hitomi satellite, X-ray astronomers anticipated a host of scientific breakthroughs. Tragically, Hitomi broke apart just five weeks after launch, the mission ending almost before it could begin. Almost, because an advanced instrument called the Soft X-ray Spectrometer returned early results that will be studied for years to come. Developed and built by Goddard scientists working closely with colleagues from several institutions in Japan, Hitomi's soft X-ray spectrometer proved its ability to separate X-ray colors with unprecedented detail. Astronomers typically learn about the composition, temperature, and motions of cosmic sources by spreading light into a rainbow-like spectrum. Hitomi's soft X-ray spectrometer worked differently. It used a microcalorimeter to measure the minute amount of heat delivered when individual X-ray photons struck its 35-pixel detector array. The results are simply amazing. During the instrument's checkout period, astronomers targeted NGC 1275, a galaxy powered by a supermassive black hole. It resides at the heart of the Perseus Galaxy Cluster, a collection of thousands of galaxies immersed in a vast cloud of superheated gas. 
This multi-million degree gas makes the Perseus galaxy cluster the brightest in the sky when seen in X-rays. But until now, details about the motion of this gas were out of reach. Here's the best previous spectrum of the cluster from Japan's Suzaku mission. And here's what Hitomi saw, a landscape of X-ray peaks and valleys corresponding to emissions from various chemical elements, particularly iron and nickel. These elements, forged in massive stars, were distributed by billions of supernova explosions throughout the cluster's history. The spectrum has 30 times the resolution of the one captured by Suzaku. This information has, for the first time, allowed scientists to map how X-ray emitting gas moves in a cluster of galaxies. One surprise, the gas is moving hundreds of thousands of miles an hour toward and away from us. This is actually surprisingly slow when you consider that the gas is continually stirred by bubbles blown out from the active galaxy. The spectrum also reveals contradictions with current models of how hot plasma emits X-rays that astronomers will work to resolve. Although its mission was cut short, Hitomi's soft X-ray spectrometer proved to be the technological marvel its designers expected. It will lead to a new generation of instruments capable of distinguishing tens of thousands of X-ray colors while also capturing sharp images, greatly advancing our understanding of the X-ray universe. Well, that's it for this week, Space Fans. Thanks to all the Patreon supporters for making SFN possible, and thank you for watching. And as always, keep looking up.